So the next thing I want to get at with, with Teotihuacan and this idea of, of mold making and agency under, under a state society and, and kind of the, the feeling of independence that a, a subject might have is the idea of, of the entrance or, or kind of navigating an entrance to a, to a personal transcendent type experience. And the, the incense burners from Teotihuacan have this facade element. And this is a, this is the butterfly palace at Teotihuacan. And these are these kind of like head ornaments, but they're these kind of facade architectural facade moments that are really striking. And the, the, the incense burners operate in a, in a similar way in that you have a, a facade and you have this kind of moment of reflection or engagement with a character that is with it, within that, within the shadows of it. And I, I call this entrance examination. And a similar thing happens with something like uh, Notre Dame, where you have this facade, this kind of flat artifice that, that it's difficult to really know how deep or how voluminous voluminous, how much volume there is beyond that facade. And part of the way that works is you're inundated with the kind of many surface changes and kind of glittering of, of, uh, of intricacies. And that's, that's a very, there's a, there's a wildly similar feeling here with the, you're kind of, there's this frontal face with these kind of um, many moments and you don't you don't quite know where to look or how to how to assemble your entrance into this thing and i think that's a fascinating parallel i had this impression when i walked into notre dame it was there was this kind of glittering kind of flat thing that I was dealing with and when I went into it I was opened into this space that was that was both kind of um kind of like uh higher than the highest tree canopy I had ever witnessed but lower than the clouds this kind of confusing and amazing like grand space and so Teotihuacan was this was this city and and there's evidence that the apartments were controlled. The means of access and entrance could be cordoned, cordoned off depending on the, um, the situation. And this idea of control of movement within a tight social network uh, reminds me of, of this idea of experiencing Notre Dame and, and how we are um, positioned and how we navigate through architectural space in the cities that, that we live in. So like what kind of facade do we approach and how obvious is the, is the thinness and, and where is the exit, right? Like what is our means of, of, of leaving? And, and to me, this brings up the idea of the pressure on conformity in, in this kind of city. And it's that that's also been, there's a lot of research about that. It's not just me making this up, but if you look at like the Piero flagellation scene, on the bottom right, there's this kind of idea that you navigate through this flagellation and then you escape through the stairwell in the back. And here's like a classic Western um, architecture of these, these flat facades. And so I think this is interesting to think about in terms of, in terms of a society state uh, cultural vibe, like, like where do we enter a thing and, and when do we get to leave it? And how long do we get to be lost in it or experience some transcendental um, moment? And then before we're kind of pulled back in to conform again in order to have a, a society that can function. These are views of the apartment compounds and the grids and the, and the way that the, the, the town was laid out. And, and so that the facade thing begs begs the question of this kind of thinness of of it, and I bring back our our concept of the daguerreotypes and the idea that this picture is taken, but behind the person, in order to be to be held still for our perusal for our viewing, there's this this apparatus that that holds the person, and that apparatus um, 
insinuates a a flatness that that works with the with the picture plane and with the process of of taking a picture because by holding the thing out in front um that's creating a a layer of um that accentuates accentuates uh i guess it accentuates layers right so if you hold something in front then you're suddenly dealing with something behind and something in front and something behind in a way that is two dimensional rather than um than three dimensional right the thing is is hidden and therefore we're not talking about what's important behind the object and of course what happens is you end up becoming more interested in what's behind it. So with a, with a flat painting in a museum, the idea is that you're supposed to just look at the surface of the painting. You're not supposed to think about what's behind it. And so then of course, as we think about art, we start to, to realize that the fact that the behind is not spoken about, we're, we're gonna be interested in that in the front and the flatness is functioning off of the fact that there is a dimension to it. Um, so when we look at the Teotihuacan incense burners, we, we often don't get to see this this angle, but this is how they look from the side. And there is this kind of precariousness and thinness to the way they're presented and um, and promoted uh, on our consciousness. This is what they look like from the back. So just to round back to, to the idea of the flatbed picture plane and the refrigerator and this idea of Raoul Rauschenberg and Leo Steinberg, I think it's it's apparent that the the incense burners function in in this way also of um, of the 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 actual hanging of the objects with our hands is 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 part of of the meaning of being able to transcend uh, our our physical space or at least engage with some spiritual presence that is not here. Um, and the, the very fact that they are talking about the thinness of the physical experience is, is fascinating. 